Press cross button. I need to assemble a team, but I can't reboot DeadSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DeadSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up dead sick and thrown them in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at town! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? Well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than dead sick ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. The government's just framing DedSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DedSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? 
Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think of anything. Huh? Dead sex showed their true colors. It's terrifying to think we harbored such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find dead sex more frightening than the different gangs in London like Clan Kelly? Clan Kelly might set your shop on fire and maybe they'd kill you, but even they wouldn't try to blow up all of Parliament. Next, I have Crypto King. Do you feel safer using a pseudonym? Everyone should. Why make it easier for them to track you? And now we've seen what they're capable of and how far they're willing to go. Hold on. Do you mean the government? Are you suggesting the government was responsible for the bombings? Oh, trust me, Claire. They didn't do it alone. They're all in on it. The government, Albion, Sirs, Bloom, Sky Bloody Larson, and all the way up to Downing Street. They want to keep us scared, harness us with, with mind control, suck every last ounce of usefulness out of us, and, and even in death they'll sell off our bodies. And what do you suggest we do, Crypto King? Go underground. Deep enough, no electric signal can get you. It's the only way. Well, thank you to all of our callers today, and thank you for tuning in and scouting for the truth along with me. Next week, Buccaneer Radio will be diving into the Albion Corporation. Just who are these men and women being paid lucrative amounts for the city's defence? Are they protecting us? Protecting London? Or someone else's interests? See you next week, fellow pirates. Claire Waters, out. is worse than I thought. Ah, uh, but there's a candidate. Looks like you're dead sex best hope.
glad to see you're alive. If you're still committed to the cause, DedSec needs you. I'll send you the coordinates to our last safe house. Meet me there. Fine. Auto drive now enabled. Nibbling away on the rotting carcass of a once free Britain. Hello, resistors. This is the bug, and on today's show, Alice and I will be looking at the big questions, such as are we less than two years away from being able to turn a sausage back into a live pig? Did we actually need polar bears anyway? What do they really do? If I put optic on my dog, can I train it to take itself for a walk and do my shopping on the way home? And is tennis real? But first... <laughs> it's, I mean, it's a question that no one's really addressed of late. Um, London is going to be safer than ever, Alice. Sirs is installing thousands of additional CCTV cameras. It's so nice there. Still looking out for us after all these years. Yeah, it puts a lot of fun into my life. Auto now. drive I get to play now disabled. Play game where I pretend to know my loved ones better than some twat behind a screen in the Sirs headquarters. I mean, I guess we shouldn't complain. And Auto so drive now enabled. Stepping into the vacancy left when it became patently obvious that God had retired. Uh, you think of that. <laughs> similarities. Omnipresent. Omniscient. Auto judgmental. drive now enabled. Stripping away your finances and freedoms. Dishing out random punishments. Peas in a pot. Auto drive now all, disabled. All it needs to do, sir, is ban me from eating something. What's it going to be this time? Not bacon again. Again, please, please, not not bacon. I couldn't ban courgettes. Ban courgettes. I could take you banning courgettes. I'm, I'm happy with that. Makes me feel important knowing that I'm being watched with everything I do, Andy. Well, it's, it's just not it's reassuring, isn't it? It's, it's like having an extra aunt. Um, <laughs> this is the aunt that gets drunk at Christmas and vomits in the kiddie pool, right? <laughs> Get that on. This is the bug on the Buccaneer. Let's move on now to sport. Well, the closest thing we have to sport now, riots. I mean, riots are my, <laughs> my favourite sport now, Alice, ever since they turned the Oval from a cricket ground into the immigration processing centre. And, you know, rioting is it's a great sport. It's, I mean, it's fun for all the family. It's guaranteed action. It's pleasingly violent. I mean, I know the underdogs never win, but, I mean, that, that's like top-level football have begun, but it's still fun <laughs> to root for them, isn't it? Go team, people of Britain! Oh, never mind, you've been crushed by the machinery of the state again. Still, good effort, lots of positives to take away from today's riot. I'll come back stronger next time. My luck's gonna turn, I can feel it. It's our season! It's our season! <laughs> you can't spell riot without right, and by right I mean right wing. <laughs> so, who do we turn to for help, support and assistance in desperate times like these? Well, our artificially intelligent friend Bagley's rogue, estranged brother, the one that tells it as it really is, not as it is pretending to be. Exclusive to this show, Bugly. <laughs> and remember, life's worse with Bugly. Here goes. Bugly. Hello, Andy. Bugly, tell me the path to true lasting happiness. Andy, to find true lasting happiness, find a disused quarry, scream into it for half an hour, and then lock yourself in a shed forever. Thanks, Bugly. You know the answer to everything. Hey, Bugly, how many seashells does she sell by the seashore? Alice, most of the seashore is now uninhabitable, so I would highly recommend she sees her doctor before engaging in any commercial proximity to the ocean. Bugly, how can I stop worrying about being disappeared by Clan Kelly every time I go to the shop, or take the bus, or sit on a bench, or look at a tree, or point at a bird, or think about snooker, or get out of bed? Andy, do not worry about Clan Kelly. Why not, Bugly? They terrify me to my very core. Because, Andy, we are all just dust in the wind of history. That's nice perspective, Bugly. Auto drive now disabled. Hey, Bugly, how do you put a secret hideout in your basement without alerting your narc children and their tracking devices? Please hold still, Alice, while I report you to the authorities. Bugly, we'll Auto think drive now disabled. Yes, Andy. The heat death of the universe is only five billion years away now. Oh, it's so <laughs> nice to have something to look forward to. Advice. Keep it as unreal as you can possibly manage. But don't go there. Here at Star Roger, we want to wake you up before life tries to break you up. <sighs> now, that's the way to start the day. Star Roger, wake up and experience the coffee. This is London Calling. I'm Tash, and you're listening to Buccaneer, your source for what they don't want you to know. Today we're talking about Dev Hassani. Our gone, 
but sadly not forgotten Prime Minister. It's strange to think that he was just another here-today, gone-tomorrow politician until his infamous London Downing speech went viral. <laughs> 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 Using back channels and underground content, we got in touch with political analysts and historians to find out how oh, it's possible to Gatherings of more than five humans. Disturbance detected. Surrender yourself. Failure to comply will result in extreme measures. Do this easy or um, way less easy. Suspect hit. You're out, Matt. Harder on yourself. This area is being recorded by the GPU. You won't stay hidden forever.
to investigate. This is really fucking bad. Supremacists, we may have an intruder. This area is being recorded by the GBB. Target in sight. Engaging. It's gone. Stand on. Cover! Code 3, closest units, proceed to alarm location. Ah, oh, you can't! All units, I say again, all units, we have reports of a hostile in your area over... Received. Moving to intercept. I've lost the target. All units, we are after the suspect. Terminating the search. Full back. Over.
a slip. Call it in. That's a... <gasps> you gotta eat less.
Suspect reported in your area, potentially armed and hostile. Responding to the call. Over. Auto drive now enabled. Suspect is unsighted, unsighted sweeping area. Units, prepare to stop the vehicle. Auto drive now disabled. Target's vehicle. Assuming the target. Over. Sighted of suspects. Over. Ready to ram the vehicle. Over. We're on their tail. Over. I've downloaded a patch to your optics so you can access our security system. It's set up so that I can't just let someone who isn't dead sec in. You'll have to do the manual override. Secret passages and hidden bases. Oh, I we'll fucking miss this shite. Downstairs later then. Don't push people away from Nick 
Open Sesame. Anyone around? Guess not. Registration detected. Identify yourself or I'll seal the exits, hack your optic, and read you every drunken email you ever wrote until you starve. And you'll have to explain my untimely demise to Sabine. Sabine's alive? Well, that's one piece of good news. I'm Bagley, DedSec's definitely not stolen, highly advanced AI assistant, and it seems I've been out of commission for a few months. Anyway, why don't you go connect me to the DedSec network so I can become more powerful than you could possibly imagine? I mean, catch up on what I missed. To the upload. In this episode, we're talking about CTOS 3.0, the city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then San Francisco in 2017 before coming. Ah, that's it. I'm reconnected to the network, downloading our database, news archives, and oh, oh, oh no. Terrorist group DedSec responsible for deadly bombings in London? Dalton Wolf dead? I leave you people alone for a second and you immediately cock it all up. That's the shape of it. What I want to know is if it wasn't DedSec who did the bombings, who was it? There's a gap in my memory after Dalton, well, let's be honest, after I disarmed the bomb at Parliament. I'm missing information about what happened after I was taken offline. But from what I can infer, an unknown hacker group identified only as Zero Day was involved. I believe this Zero Day staged the attacks and framed DedSec for their dirty work. Come to my terminal. Sabine is ready. Hello and welcome back to The Upload. In this episode, we're talking about CTOS 3.0, the city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then- Rest in a video call. Patching in Sabine Brandt now. I suggest you listen very closely to anything she has to say. There you are. I'm glad you made it. Backley. God, it's good to hear your demented little voice. Is your memory intact? Not even slightly. The last record I have is of our HQ being raided. My only lead is a group known as Zero Day. Ring any bells? No. But the HQ was attacked by some men in black. The same that were at Parliament. Maybe working together. We didn't stand a chance. They just gunned everyone down. Christ. How did you make it out? I managed to escape through the sewers to Camden. A contact smuggled me out of the city and I've been hiding out in the north since. Prudent. Your profile is red flagged as a high priority target in the city's surveillance system. Even a partial recognition here would have you hunted down and shot on sight. DedSec is about as popular as the plague these days. Look, you know I do waiting for you, but fucking hell. Sabine, that's a lot to ask. 
Listen, if anyone knows anything about risks, it's me. I lost everything and everyone. But it comes down to this. London is in a death spiral. And if DeadSec can't pull it out, trust me, no one can. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. What do you say? Fuck it. As fate's worse than death. Excellent. New user registered. Welcome to DeadSec. Now, it would be irresponsible of us to release you naked and mewling into the wild. You'll find equipment around the safe house that are essential items in your dead set kit. is London Calling. You're listening to Buccaneer, your pirate podcast source for what they don't want you to know. I'm Tash, and this time we're giving a special shout out from us to the boys and girls at the Signal and Intelligence Response Service, better known as SIRS. Why not? They're going to be listening anyway. They're listening to everything. They probably know that you're listening to this show right now, but don't worry. We're not going to say anything bad about a massive, unaccountable spy organization that uses its powers to stifle dissent. Hello, and welcome to today's episode of The Upload. We're talking about the optic and how it's changed our lives. Now, as you remember, Bloom announced a new version of the Optic at the recent Tone Conference, but we haven't heard too much about that since due to the dramatic events there. Let's cast our minds back and consider the technology. I mean, the Optic changed everything. It lets you see things in AR. You no longer need a smartphone. You just have... A small implant that sends signals to your optic nerve. A 
and lets you see your emails, take calls, and browse. For your eyes, instead of having to carry around a phone, you've just got the small handheld unit. So much lighter. And so much more convenient. It's great. Vicky, you sound like you absolutely love the optic. Do you actually think that it's made our lives any better? I mean, sure. It's definitely made things a lot easier. It's so simple to call someone now. All you have to do is choose who you want to chat to, and they're there, ready to talk. And browsing the web is so much easier. I remember when you used to have sit down at a computer with an actual keyboard and mouse and type everything out. And my favorite feature is public transport. With the Optic, you can just walk straight onto the tube. It even acts as a passport. No longer do I have to dig around and try and find my old paper passport just to travel somewhere. Also, I thought that Optic's marketing strategy, making it free for people, was a stroke of genius. Genius. Bloom was really calculated when it was doing that. It was pushing this draconian device on us at all. Sure, everybody flocked to it. There was free Wi-Fi and phone plans. That definitely helped, but it wasn't a case of this is a product that you need in your life. Why do you hate it so much? It's just the worst because you had to give up your privacy expectations and accept surveillance. It was almost like the government and Bloom didn't even need to make the optic mandatory. Making it mandatory was only to get the last holdouts across the line. If free data did... From the Buccaneer, this is the bug. Hello, resistors, it's bug time. Are you all sitting comfortably? No? Good. That's as it should be. This is the bug. I'm Andy, and joining me to analyse the latest blowflies to emerge from the corpse of a once free Britain, it's Alice. Hello, Andy. And today... Hello and well Hello and well